Thank you very much, Mr. Kozachenko. Uh, I'm happy to be here, and uh, we're very happy that you all came here. Uh, you've made this conference a great success. I would like to look at farmland investment opportunities here in Ukraine. Uh, I'll start with some reasons. I think the basic reason why everybody's interested in farmland is because it appreciates in value faster than inflation. So it's a, theoretically, it's a good place to put your money. Uh, and so when we look at the Ukrainian condition, uh, we see that land prices, when I say land prices, that means that I'm referring to the land market. And in Ukraine, there is a land market. It's called buying companies that have the right to lease land. So when we look at land prices in Ukraine, we see that the price to buy a lease from somebody else has risen to about $380. When we look at the terms of leases, they range from 49 years to five years, and land lease payments are about 30 to $60. So what we see is a very attractive market for leasing and, or buying leases, in other words, a real land market. And of course, we're, since, since uh, we're following FAO, and FAO does give us a good price index, here's the price index again, and all that is to say is, is that prices for agricultural commodities are increasing. Ukraine is also very attractive, not because of land only, but also because it has a reasonably good infrastructure. Uh, it has significant potential to increase production in irrigation. And when you compare the prices to produce a ton of commodities in Ukraine to other parts of the world where investment is going, you'll see that Ukraine is actually one of the lowest cost investment opportunities. Um, looking at what Ukraine exports, we see that there's a significant portion of Ukrainian exports are both agricultural commodities and finished food products, as well as, as vegetable oils. Ukraine has the largest land area in Europe, and it has the lowest wheat grain production costs. So that's why you should be thinking about investing. And when you look at one of the areas that's really very attractive, Ukraine has probably about a million and a half, maybe a million eight hundred thousand hectares, which are suitable for irrigation, but which aren't, aren't being used. And some a little bit additional investment into irrigated uh, equipment, and you can see a really a large uh, potential increase in total production in Ukraine. When you look at the... Um, when you look at what you would do after you do the investment, you would do exactly what Mr. Prichotko is, say, is saying. That is, you would increase the efficiency of the production. Very often when people invest into Ukrainian agricultural enterprises, those enterprises are operating at a very low level. So one of the ways that you can increase their effectiv effectiveness is by looking at uh, scaling them up, putting in more uh, technology, improving management, getting involved in things like risk management, in other words, doing some hedging, looking at uh, sustainable farming practice and producing for a very specific market purpose. But there are some risks associated with investing into Ukrainian farmland. Uh, the current risk, the largest risk, is that you can't obtain freehold ownership. Uh, yesterday there was a session when we talked about this. Uh, my belief is, is that irrespective of the type of uh, legislation that is finally adopted, uh, I think full ownership rights in Ukraine will always be suspect, and that's because Ukraine has a weak legal system, and its legislative uh, policy environment creates a very uncertain environment. Third, Ukraine has a has problems with its judiciary. Um, it's not very independent. Uh, there's huge problems enforcing court decision, and government authorities very often use their uh, capacity to go against businesses or citizens. And lastly, there's a significant amount of crime and corruption, which makes investment difficult. But. What we have, though, is we've got some very good land. Uh, on this map, you'll see a black... Yeah. Yes, I would, I would agree also with what Leonid is saying. Uh, he's right. 
there are very, there's some very excellent skilled people, uh, very hardworking people. So if you look at Ukraine, at the soil map of Ukraine, you'll see uh, that the majority, practically 75% uh, of, the, of the territory of the country is suitable for, for agriculture. So let me then get into the, my last uh, point, what you should do when you're buying farmland in Ukraine. First of all, I'll repeat that you don't buy farmland, you buy enterprises. So, if you, if you want to go farming in Ukraine, you need to have a plan. You shouldn't just think about doing farming. So you look at an enterprise, you evaluate it, does it fit your strategic plan? If you have an already existing operation, is it close to your existing operation? Don't try and buy land that's cheap, and I, I, an enterprise that's cheap, so you're paying maybe $50, $100 per hectare, but it's 350 kilometers away from your existing operation. The farms that you buy, they should always already be profitable. The reason for that is, is that when you buy a farm, the people that are working there will likely stay there. And if currently they're unprofitable, that means that you're gonna to have to spend a lot of money on the people and on the technology to get it back to profitability. Land quality, is important, but it's less important than the profitability of the actual enterprise that you're buying. Legal structure is very important. If you're buying a farm, try buying farms where there's only one owner. Do not buy farms where there's more than one owner, because then you're going to be getting into a lot of trouble. Under Ukrainian uh, legislation, when there's more than one owner, even if somebody has one share, they can take away all your rights very quickly. Uh, you shouldn't buy farms that have problems with paying their taxes. This is a very dangerous thing to do, is to get into an enterprise with lots of tax liabilities. Avoid farms that have debt or legal claims outstanding. Focus on farms that have good management and good staff with good infrastructure and equipment. Uh, and that they have some inventory and other biological assets. Size is maybe the last thing to be considered. The point is, is that if you buy into a good operation here in Ukraine, the chances of being profitable and making money are fantastic. If you buy into a piece of land by buying an, an enterprise which is dead, i.e. not producing, you will spend three to five years bringing it back to life. For an investor, I think it's much better to focus on investing in good farms with good management and good people. If there's any questions, I'm ready to take them now.